you can spend all day kind of looking at the data, comparing your score. But at the end of the day, I know a lot of students in my class who scored both well above and below yep. the median score. And so certainly not a make or break, but something to consider. Dorothy, welcome back to the MCAT podcast. We wrapped up our series on kind of how to start your MCAT prep journey. And now we're going to the very other end of that journey. We got our score back and uh oh, it didn't go as well as we hoped. Probably because they weren't listening to the MCAT podcast on how to start <laughs> appropriately. Uh, there are a million on. reasons, a million reasons why someone doesn't get the score they want. Step one, mm-hmm. acceptance. <laughs> how do we how do we overcome the fact that we have this score? Maybe we're in the application cycle. Maybe we're not. We get the score that we have put so much weight on in terms of this is the score that th- this test, this score is mm-hmm. is going to make or break my ability to be a physician how do we how do we overcome that initial trauma yeah i'm i mean i think like the mcat certainly is the most quantitative and more like arguably more objective measure of readiness for med school um and i think a lot of us do put a lot of weight into it um and as as do med schools and so definitely thinking through like it is Certainly, no one ever wants to get back an MCAT score that they're not proud of. Um, And so I think kind of just thinking through like, okay, taking a step back, how does this impact my journey to medicine? Certainly doesn't have to be a permanent impact by any means, especially if you are looking to retake or um, moving forward in another way. Um, But I think just taking some time to think through, okay, what does this mean? Am I applying currently? Do I still want to keep applying to X number of schools? Do I want to adjust that moving forward? Um, If you aren't applying and maybe looking to apply soon, thinking through, okay, is this something where I need to retake it, give it another shot? um, Or is that outweighed by the, I guess, the risk benefit analysis of like amping up other parts of my application versus amping up my MCAT score? So there's certainly a lot of things to think about. And I think it does depend on where you are in that cycle, whether you're applying, you've applied, looking to apply in the future, so on and so forth. Yeah. How, how do we evaluate the score, right? I can I can Google double AMC MCAT percentiles. I, I did that yesterday. Uh, <laughs> and, and looking at the new percentiles and things things are moving, things are shifting some. Shifting up, yeah. Uh, I, I, I take all, all the credits. We should take all the credit. The MCAT podcast is helping students score better on the MCAT. So mm-hmm. those, those scores are shifting. Um, Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do we how do we think about this? Is it just like less than 500 retake, more than 500 shoot your shot? Like how should a student go, this is good enough. It's not, maybe not what I wanted, but it's good mm-hmm. enough. I'm going to keep pushing forward versus it's not what I wanted and it's not good enough. Mm-hmm. How, how do we How do we get that answer? Is there yeah. an answer? Um, I wouldn't say there's a clear cut answer or clear cut threshold for anyone. The reason being there's actually a quite large range of like average MCAT scores for all the med schools like in the US, Caribbean. Like if you com- if you combine like the aggregate data that we have um, on the med schools that a lot of US or um, Canadian applicants end up going to. Um, so if you are thinking like top tier med school, one of the top research institutions, um, definitely worth looking at their um, I think the uh, AMSAR is great, or the AMSAR is great as an uh, application resource just for looking at like average MCAT scores for matriculants and applicants to each of these schools. Just, just um, so one, you, one clarification: those aren't yeah. average MCAT scores; those are median. Ah, those are not. You. Those are not okay. mean. Those are median. <laughs> okay, median. Yes, definitely a good stats clarification. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so you can kind of look at like, what schools am I hoping to go to? Would I be happy with submitting my current school to these schools that are on my list? And if not, maybe it's time to either think about like, would I be okay applying to other schools where my scores may be more appropriate or like maybe um, within a certain range? Um, Or 
kind of modifying your either your expectations or um, your plans moving forward. Yeah. yeah. I think that the hardest thing to understand in this process mm -hmm. is that the MCAT is one data point. Yeah. It is it is not, it doesn't have to be a make or break data point. Right. Mm -hmm. Obviously there are bad MCAT scores and we're like, yeah, you you probably are not ever going to get in with that score. And and yeah. that's okay to say because there are those scores out there. There are these random like like purgatory scores of like it's not terrible, it's not great. It may be good enough at a lot of the schools you're looking at, even if their median numbers are much, much higher. There, there was a, yeah. a question in our, our Facebook group the other day, our pre-med hangout of like, uh, here's my MCAT score, what should I do? And somebody posted, you should never apply to a school when your score is five points below their median. <laughs> like, uh, oh. based on what data? <laughs> yeah. And like, anecdotally, someone's like, uh, I got an interview at a, a New York City school that has a 519 <laughs> median MCAT, and I am sitting here rocking a 507, like, yeah. as a non-URM. And, and it's just like, the MCAT is just one data point. It has to yeah. be good enough for the schools to understand that you're probably going to do well in the classes, although mm -hmm. GPA is probably a little bit better for that, but you're going to do well on the board exams and pass them the first time and, and do well uh, yeah. and and continue to do well on all those other exams you have in your future as a physician. <laughs> so and yeah, yeah and, and it's just, it's, it's one data point. And so it's really, really hard to hinge your whole, should I apply, should I not apply, should I give up on the MCAT score, because mm -hmm. it's it's just impossible to answer, oh, with that score, you're not gonna get in. With this score, you will get in. All right, go to go to my application renovation series on, <laughs> on YouTube. I got plenty of 517, 518, 528. I had a 528 student not get into med school because there's okay. so much more than just stats when it Absolutely. comes to applying to medical school. So that's, all right, just right off the bat, that's one of the hardest things to, to get across to students. And it's frustrating for everyone involved because we can't just say, yes, no, that's good, that's not good. Yeah, and I think a lot of us do want to like, when we apply, we want to be on the, we want to have the leg up when we apply and have that little bit of comfort and being like, okay, my score is at least around the median or the average score, or maybe a few points higher. So like, there's more of a chance for me. So I think none of us love being in that position of feeling like the underdog coming in, but you're right, there's so many other parts of the application. Like, what is your story? Do you have other strengths or other experiences or other, you know, things that you can bring to the table that would be helpful for medicine or that med schools might be attracted to? Um, and so, yeah, there's certainly no make or break score. Um, you can spend all day looking at averages. And um, I want to say the median or average score for um, U.S. matriculants is probably around a 510 for MD schools. So um, 511.7, I, I believe, last I okay. looked. Yeah. Is that a median or a mean? I need that to is the sure average. Yeah, sure. that's a mean. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. All, all of the AAMC data and all of their charts, those are averages or, or means. The, the yeah. MSAR, for whatever reason, they use median data for the MSAR. Um, got it. Um, yeah. So I think you can spend all day kind of looking at the data, comparing your score. But at the end of the day, I know a lot of students in my class who scored both well above and below yep. the median score. And so certainly not a make or break, but something to consider. Yeah, definitely. So one of the biggest issues potentially is students are oftentimes in the middle of or at the very beginning of their application cycle when they mm -hmm. get their score back. What, what What's your advice to a student that's like, uh, I just submitted my primary, just spent $800 submitting that, and I have mm -hmm. the secondary sitting here that I'm gonna spend another couple thousand dollars on. Mm -hmm. Should I should I stop doing that? Should I try to cram for, for an MCAT retake in a month or two and just mm -hmm. let my secondaries pile up? Like, what's your general advice around that? Yeah, that's a hard situation. Um, I think for secondaries, we generally recommend returning them within two to four weeks of receiving them. So it's already a pretty tight timeline to write all of these school specific essays and get them in and have and be proud of the quality of what you're submitting. So that's already tough just in terms of like not having to retake the MCAT or study for anything else and just turning around those secondaries. It's already a big time commitment. Um, I think 
some students might modify what they are applying to. So maybe you applied to 40 schools on your primary, depending on your score and depending on like what you think your feasibility is at certain higher range or higher tier schools, you can maybe prioritize the primaries for the schools that you, or the secondaries for the schools you most want to apply to at that point. Give yourself some time to recoup and retake the MCAT and then um, kind of see what happens with your application cycle. Um, some students don't retake and just shoot their shot and do what they can. Um, but I, I think it is also just a very situational thing how much can you invest in your secondaries in terms of the financial investment? Um, how much time can you invest in potentially retaking the MCAT? Um, yeah, so I think it's a very personal decision depending on like what you prioritize, whether it's like saving money and um, like giving yourself the best shot when you do apply, whether it's shooting your shot, seeing what comes back and then readjusting your plans from there. Yeah. What What do you do if you're a student, you're trying to reevaluate, you get your score back, a lot of times it's not where you want to be, but the student's like, yeah, I'm not surprised. But sometimes the student's like, whoa, that's like 15 points lower than I've ever scored on a practice test. Mm. How is a student supposed to evaluate mm -hmm. the time needed to course correct to improve that score moving forward so that it can help them make that decision of I should push forward and still go through this application cycle versus I should just withdraw my application and take time because I'm definitely not where I need to be. Yeah, so I guess we can go through both of the scenarios that you just mentioned. So the first being, I'm not surprised and maybe I wasn't as prepared as I could have been for this exam. In that case, I'm guessing it would probably take you a little longer to retake it and do well and have a substantially enough score increase that it's worth your time and worth the MCAT retake. Um, so if you're not, feeling super prepared for the first time you sit down um, and you get back a score that you're not happy with, you, I think no matter who you are after a disappointing score, you need to kind of sit back and think, okay, why did I not perform as well as I wanted to? Like, what were the factors that led up to it? Was I not prepared? Was I too nervous and just anxiety and jitters and all of that tanked my performance? Um, so yeah, if you are on the underprepared side, or maybe you didn't spend enough time doing content review, or maybe not enough practice, that will probably take more of the traditional MCAT timeline to, in order to gain that practice and gain that um, content um, experience. If it is on the second hand, um, kind of in the second case where you had been scoring really well in your practice tests, things are going in a positive trajectory and then something happened on MCAT day where you just did not do as well. Again, thinking through, okay, what were the factors? Was it my caffeine schedule? Was it my sleep schedule? Was I just really anxious or something happened? Kind of thinking through that. Or if it was some level of under preparation. Um, if it is kind of boiling down to just test day circumstances, that is something where you can probably study for a little bit, maybe a few weeks, retake it and hopefully perform to the same level that you were prior to taking it the first time. Yeah. Um, and so that would be a situation where maybe you can just schedule your retake study a bit and continue on with your application cycle as is. <sighs> All right. What else in terms of initial reactions, initial kind of uh, reflections and starting to build a plan moving forward? What, what else should a student be thinking about that we haven't covered? Anything? Mm, I think if you um, had been doing this prior to taking the first MCAT, um, a lot of our students do something called a lessons learned journal where we do practice questions. And as you review our practice questions, we write down like, okay, what went wrong? What did I miss? Whether it's a content thing, like I just didn't know this equation or I didn't understand this connection or this conceptual relationship, or whether it's a strategy thing, like I missed this word in this answer choice that made it completely wrong, or I didn't highlight my passage well, I didn't really get the main idea, or I didn't interpret this figure well. So kind of looking through like, what are my individual like patterns and weaknesses that I tend to fall into? Um, so I think the first thing after getting back a score that you're not happy with is maybe to do that exercise, whether it's something you've done already, you can just go back and read through your LLJ, or if you take another practice test and kind of do this exercise of, okay, what are some specific things I can work on moving forward? Um, and can using that to guide your um, future practice um, can be really helpful. Awesome. All right, well, as we move forward in this little mini series for kind of regrouping after a, a an MCAT score comes back that we just aren't happy with and, and we're not sure how to move forward, 
our following episodes are all going to be about individual sections and how do we improve those individual individual sections that maybe we performed a little bit less than spectacular on. Mm-hmm.